right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, this webinar today is brought to you by Florida Makes, and we are here um, hoping that all of you are doing well and um, that we all come out of this coronavirus situation very quickly and safely. And um, one of the things we want to talk about today is um, letting you be aware of training grants that are out there as people may be shifting positions and things. And um, so as part of our talent development series, we today are presenting the Key to Recovery, Florida's Workforce Training Grants and Employer Services. We're very fortunate today to have um, two wonderful speakers, uh, Daryl McCall with Florida May, uh, sorry, Career Source Florida, and Fernando Mendez with Veterans Florida. And so again, I'm Tina Berger. I'm the Director of Talent with Florida Makes, and I will be the moderator today. We wanted to tell you a little bit about um, our uh, mission at Florida Makes. We're presented. Um, through this series focused at the suggestion of our Advanced Manufacturing Workforce Leadership Council, which is focused on helping manufacturers with common workforce challenges and to create awareness of the partners that Florida makes and our expert business advisors in the field work with to assist you, the manufacturers, with training resources that are available in Florida. Watch for other industry-related webinars as they will be posted on our website our next uh, June webinar will be focused on our brand new Industrial Manufacturing Technician Registered Apprenticeship Program, and we will be scheduling that date soon. Um, just a housekeeping note, as a participant, you will all be muted and will be in listen-only mode. And during the webinar, we will, we will be asking several polls, and they will pop up on your screen. Please participate. It helps our speakers understand um, some of the content that they're presenting, its relevance to you. And additionally, you will have the opportunity to ask questions um, using the question window, typically off to the right side of your screen. We will answer all the questions that time allows for at the end of the entire presentation. And this is a live webinar event, which is being recorded. The link to the recording will be provided to you within a few days, and it will be posted on Florida Makes YouTube channel on our website. So once again, thank you again for joining us today. Florida Makes is the Florida member of the MEP National Network. MEP is the Manufacturing Extension Partnership, a program in the US Department of Commerce and the National Institute of Standards and Technology, commonly referred to as NIST. It is our mission at Florida Makes and the MEPs to assist small and medium-sized manufacturers by providing resources and expert advice that will help our manufacturers grow and prosper. And please note off on the right-hand side, that is the Regional Manufacturing Association Network members, many of whom consist, uh, who are our board members and we work at their direction. So if you'd like to have more information about all the services that we provide um, to manufacturers, please go to our website, www.floridamakes.com, and you'll find lots of information there to help you. It is now my pleasure to introduce Daryl McCall, Director of Business Development um, with uh, Career Source Florida, the nonprofit public-private workforce policy board led by business and charged with developing strategies and policies for Florida's workforce system. He's been for the last 24 years of professional experience in workforce development. Daryl advances CareSource Florida's mission to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent and Floridians with employment and career development opportunities to achieve economic prosperity for all of us. Daryl also um, is in charge of the manufacturing sector for CareSource Florida, and he assists all 24 of the local workforce boards with specialty information on manufacturing. Daryl is also um, 
part of our Advanced Manufacturing Workforce Leadership Council and is very involved in the Florida Makes mission. Welcome, Daryl, and thank you again for joining us today. Thank you, Tina, and thank you to the Florida Makes family. Um, it's been a pleasure to uh, see the Florida Makes brand grow in Florida and be that amazing resource for all of our 20 plus thousand plus manufacturers across Florida. Um, let's make sure that can slow. Real quick about Career Source Florida. I am a senior director in our business and workforce development unit. Uh, and I have the absolute honor and privilege to um, serve as the primary point of contact for manufacturing for our network, working with a lot of professionals across uh, many different uh, partners uh, throughout our great state. But a little bit about Career Source Florida um, it's a statewide workforce policy investment board of business and government leaders, and it's charged with guiding workforce development for the state of Florida. It was created by the legislature in 2000. Um, and what Career Source Florida does is it provides oversight and a poly di policy direction for our talent development programs administered through the Department of Economic Opportunity and our 24 local workforce development boards. And there are 100 career centers across Florida. Together, Career Source Florida Network connects employers with qualified skilled talent and Floridians with employment and career development opportunities to achieve economic prosperity. And you'll see our goal here. We're focused on uh, that prosperity of workers and employers, um, employers being our primary customer. Without the jobs, we wouldn't be able to fill <laughs> the, those uh, jobs with, with qualified candidates. So. We're very um, appreciative of that opportunity. Uh, we work very closely with our partners, as mentioned. Uh, we share common vision and common goals. Everyone from the Florida Chamber, who identified in the 2030 report uh, the, the absolute uh, um, success of manufacturing in Florida and how vital that is to Florida's economy uh, and the growth within Florida. Uh, we're excited about manufacturing in Florida. Uh, from all aspects. And we work with, again, all of our partners, e educational partners, economic development partners, um, and really look at, looking at our targeted growth sectors, not just most jobs out there, but actual um, career pathways and, and opportunities for folks to enter into a career path, earn a sustainable wage, and, and be promoted throughout uh, Florida. And, seeking to provide that quality of talent for manufacturers um, so that they stay in Florida and create even more new jobs and, and share wealth within Florida. Um, real quick, I'm part of a great team at Career Source Florida. It's our business and workforce development team. Tina mentioned I had the pleasure of focusing in on advanced manufacturing. Uh, my boss, Andrew Cornelius, leads our team and you can see the difference, our different uh, team members here, Carmen Mims, focused on aviation aerospace, Alicia Norton, um, our apprenticeship guru, foc also focusing on IT. Um, our whole team works with businesses across Florida uh, to come up with solutions and working with our local state and local partners. And it's a pleasure to, to be uh, tagged as the advanced manufacturing sector. Um, Tina mentioned it, and it's here. It's the COVID-19. It's a unprecedented time for our whole state. Um, our network has developed a help is here uh, campaign. Just to give you some stats, in February, our great state was looking at a record low 2.8% unemployment rate. Economy is was, was just rocking and rolling, moving forward. Um, and then the impact of COVID. We've seen 9-11, we've seen the, uh, the downfall of the economy back in 08. We've seen a number of things, uh, but nothing like this, probably since the time of the Great Depression. Um, and our network has responded immediately and right away with our Help Us Here campaign. And it was, it was basically launched to let folks know all across Florida, both job seekers and employers, that we are open uh, although we may be virtual in many places, and now uh, our centers are starting to open back up, 
uh, we remained open, we remained uh, flexible, uh, using all the, the new uh, technology that we can, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, cell phones, um, we're, um, like many, we're, we're looking at how we can uh, implement some of these changes moving forward to be even more responsive for Floridians. But as you can imagine, um, ever since March 15th uh, through yesterday, um, about 2 million people have filed for reemployment assistance through the Department of Economic Opportunity. Uh, and I know they processed about 1.5 million of those. So you can see the, the uh, absolute flood of individuals that are coming in to us, also businesses. Um, this, this page was developed with uh, the business in mind and the, and the uh, job seeker as well uh, to provide some, some help right away. Um, you can see here we linked up to many of our partner services uh, like the SBA, Economic Injury Disaster Loans, Reemployment Assistance Benefits, and I know our one-stop centers are, have a heavy hand in helping folks reset pins and, and get into the system. Um, it's just an all-out effort to help folks across Florida. Um, you can also see uh, the uh, additional programs, SBA Debt Relief Program, or the Paycheck Protection Program, the Damage Assessment Survey, all um, great links to tap into to, to help your business. Because of the COVID-19 um, impact, I want to do a quick poll. Um, I'm hoping we've got lots of manufacturers on online and our, our, I want to do a quick poll. So James, James if you could uh, bring up a poll, um, just to get a little information from you all. So as a result of COVID-19, uh-oh, And how do I minimize this? Oh, let me, here we go, okay. As a result of COVID-19, our company is, so please select one of these. Either either hiring new employees, you're focused on retaining current employees, or you're laying off employees. James? Uh, do you have that open for folks? Okay, here we go. Awesome. Okay. Fantastic. Um, so we've got 13% are hiring. Uh, oh, it went away. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> uh, okay, 13% hiring. 81% focused on retaining. That's excellent. And only 6% laying off. Okay. Thank you so much. That's great information. All right. And I think we have two more questions that we want to get a little more information from you on. Over the next 12 months, the following percentage of our employees will receive training. Select one of those. Less than 25%, more than 50%, more than 75%. Projecting out over a year. All right, make a quick selection if you haven't already. And what do we have, James? Okay, uh, we've got less than 25%. As, okay, 50% of you have said we'll, do, we'll probably be training 25%. 26% said more than 50. Okay, and almost a quarter of you said more than 75. Okay, that's good. That is excellent. And then one final question. Over the next 12 months, the following percentage of our employees could benefit from training. So you plan some, but how many of your folks could benefit over the next 12 months? 75 to 100%, 50 to 75%, 25 to 50, less than 25. Okay, yeah, so 75 to 100%, uh, 50, 58% of you said, yeah, the major, almost the majority of folks could, could receive training, could use training. 
um, said at least half or three quarters. Okay, and then eight percent, six percent. Okay, that's great information. Thank you so much, James. Appreciate it. And I will go back to driving the bus if I can. <laughs> And I, I thank you all for answering these questions. Um, I, we wanted to get a feel for um, not, not only what you're experiencing, but, then, but also in a training capacity, um, looking at what you're planning, but then also um, listing out some opportunity uh, to train folks. And we do that um, we do that both at the state and local level throughout our network. The Chris Source Florida Network um, has an array of um, both state level training grants as well as local training grants and local services and we do that through our 24 local workforce development boards seen on the screen here uh, we have all branded career source network the career source family uh, and if you have not yet met uh, your folks at your local career source office i would encourage you to and if you need help doing that click on our website or call me directly um, there are business services individuals in each of our 24 local workforce boards, many of them who specialize in manufacturing as well. Um, and I'd be glad to make that connection if you haven't already. And they work very closely with uh, the Florida Makes Business Service Advisors as well. Um, just to give you a quick idea of what some of the services that happen to the local level for career seekers, um, everything from developing resumes and preparing them, researching companies, uh, to training, paying for training, uh, both uh, certifications, uh, certificates, degrees, um, and also um, hosting recruitment events and, and inviting employers in and, and making that connection, that talent development connection, part of that pipeline. For businesses at the local level, uh, they can help you access the local la labor market's data, make sure your pay is right, you know, comparable to what the competitors are and make sure you're not um, underpaying or overpaying, reviewing resumes, scheduling interviews, hosting recruitment events, providing customized training at the local level. And of course, with COVID-19, um, lo we're looking at virtual services, virtual career fairs, a number of tools and, caveat and uh, an array of tools to be able to assist both job seekers and businesses at the local level. I want to move into a strategy that we've implemented about five years ago um, that is designed to really hone in on sectors of focus such as manufacturing and really bring in um, solutions that meet manufacturers needs and we do that for, through a sector strategy solution we do that by looking at data building around that data um, but we do it with industry input in other words uh, sometimes data can be pulled on you know growth or expansion of, of job opportunities and career pathways um, but we always bounce that off of industry because uh, you as manufacturers know what's going on at the ground level sometimes the data reflects that sometimes there are spikes uh, that we need to um, double check um, but we do that through a supportive partnership um, a shared vision and we align with our partners so if you think about your talent pipeline delivery uh, from k-12 through university system our economic development partners workforce uh, chambers when everyone focuses in on a sector that matters most to the to your regional economy like manufacturing does in florida um, you can really transform service deliveries and create that pipeline that uh, develops the talent that you as a manufacturer needs. And, the, and we're, we are um, focused in on that. Uh, just to give you an idea of what that even looks like, um, years ago, we would fill job orders. You know, employer comes in the door, um, you, need, you need to hire folks, we would try to fill that job order. That's a very transactional relationship. Uh, the sector strategy approach is a transformational relationship things like the advanced manufacturing workforce leadership council having input from industry on a broad scale on what kind of things what kind of services and strategies are going to change the talent delivery system for florida to provide the skills needed for manufacturers placing candidates you know one one-on-one -on -one, 
focused expanded worker retention advancement issue uh, pathways like career pathways education and training instead of one-offs you know designing those programs with you all the manufacturer involved and we couldn't do it without you um, and we are so blessed in florida to have many manufacturers um, roll up their sleeves and get involved and really kind of help change the direction of that talent pipeline delivery instead of so instead of going for one-to-one -one relationship it's one to many it's what's going to solve the big problem not just the one uh, manufacturer in the local area and we've seen it with uh, we've seen it through manufacturing roundtables we've seen it with our education partners you know rolling up their sleeves um we've seen it through apprenticeship programs uh, on the job training programs um, great collaboration and florida makes is a great partner in all this tina berger um, is an excellent partner and her, and her staff I do want to spend a little bit of time on apprenticeships because apprenticeships is the new word because it's the new immediate placement training uh, retention strategy uh, for the talent pipeline so much so that our advanced manufacturing workforce leadership council chaired by mr roy sweatman at southern manufacturing technologies um, and our Holke and folks put that down as one of their top priorities is to develop manufacturing apprenticeship programs across Florida. And in Florida, we work very closely with our Department of Education, uh, Chancellor Henry Mack, um, Chancellor Eric Hall, on developing these programs with Ted Norman, Apprenticeship Director. Um, and, and on top of that, our Workforce Development Board um, has invested as well. But early on, we we went after a um, a federal grant to really look look at changing and and really bolstering manufacturing or um, apprenticeships across florida these are just a handful of companies that started out right out of the bat rolling up their sleeves i know there's many more um but they participated in um, working groups uh, to develop strategies to really expand apprenticeships in florida and it's paying off in fact, our Career Source Florida board uh, invested um, in many projects, but one I want to highlight here is our partnership with the Department of Education. It's our branding campaign. It's Apprentice Florida. We launched it in 2019. And basically, um, it focuses in on getting employers involved in the in apprenticeship programs. It also connects interested parties with um, those local boards and, and their apprenticeship training directors across Florida. Um, you'll see here five key components, business involvement, structured on the job training, technical instruction, wage increases, certificates and apprenticeship completion. Um, it's a win-win for both businesses and apprentices. Um, and there are re many resources out there uh, through the Department of Education, also our local workforce boards and others, investing in setting up new apprenticeship programs. Okay, something happened to my clicker. I'm trying to advance, but something happened here. Okay. Okay, here we go. Um, I mentioned our workforce, our Career Source Florida Board of Directors, um, their investment in apprenticeship expansion grants across Florida. Um, back in 2017, they funded a number of projects, 2018, 19, continued to fund a number of apprenticeship expansion projects across Florida. Uh, seven more have been added this year, this fiscal year. Uh, it's expanding engagement, it's building capacity across Florida. Of those grants that were awarded, many of those were in manufacturing. And um, here's just a smidgen of local boards who have pioneered in this effort. Uh, you'll see up in the panhandle, Career Source Escarosa is focused in on manufacturing, Okaloosa Walton, advanced manufacturing and welding, um, some North Florida, North Central Florida is doing some, Flag of Lucia with Hudson Technologies. 
a big, huge project in Brevard, Palm Beach, uh, copying a California model, Aeroflex with Northrop Grumman, uh, that's a customized apprenticeship program. Pasco and Hernando working with AM Skills on pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeships. Suncoast with PGT, tool and die makers. Research Coast working with uh, the e their EDC and their manufacturing association to, to uh, build boot camps and CNC production technicians uh, and industrial maintenance technicians. Uh, Career Source Palm Beach County as well. Marine and a biopharmaceutical manufacturing opportunity there. So you can see uh, many of our local boards have jumped right into this space uh, and we're looking for employers who are interested in uh, helping develop that talent pipeline. Okay. I'm having some issue here. Okay. So I wanna take a, a quick transition here and talk about financial resources uh, for Florida's businesses. And we do that with our Florida Flex training grant programs. At Career Source Florida, we actually offer two state level training grant programs directly out of Tallahassee. Um, our first training grant program I wanna mention uh, was created back in 1993. Um, you can see we serve more than 600 businesses. We've trained more than 142,000 workers, and we've awarded nearly $160 million in grants. Uh, it's called the Quick Response Training Grant because it focuses in on employers who are either new, relocating Florida, creating high wet, new wage jobs, or those companies who are here who are ramping up. We've seen, uh, with, as a result of the COVID, we've seen a number of manufacturers now jump into the space. Uh, and start uh, producing PPE equipment, so they're creating net new jobs in this in this upper in, in this uh, environment of so many people being laid off in the hospitality and in, and uh, tourism sector. Uh, we see manufacturing uh, just continuing to rise and grow, and it's a great opportunity for folks. But this training grant uh, is let me see. This training grant uh, is a 12 month training grant. It's flexible to meet the company needs. Um, the company selects training providers and uh, it has approved training costs directly or reimburses reimbursements right directly to the company. Um, the eligibility for this is um, businesses need to create new full-time high quality jobs at 125% of the average county or state wage, whichever lower whichever is lower. Um, last year, or this current year, the 2019-2020 program year, um, the legislature funded this program at $9 million. It is a um, legislatively fund program uh, through the state budget. Um, so we're waiting to see what's gonna be funded this year, uh, but there's no maximum reward uh, cap per company. Um, if you if you look at the um, review, OPAGA does the uh, state statutes requires that OPAGA does a, a study every three years. And this is just some of the results uh, from that study. 96% of companies surveyed said it had a positive impact on their business. You can see employee productivity at 83%. QRT trainees still employed in Florida, 81%. Uh, even though it's not required, 63% reported an increase in employment growth and, and 14 to 18% in wages reported the, and 33% reported the grant played a role in the decision to expand or establish in Florida. You can access this grant directly through Career Source Florida. Um, of course, um, Florida Makes Business Service Advisors um, are very familiar with this grant and our, and our next grant as well. And uh, they work really closely with our, uh, our local business service folks to bring this opportunity to businesses. Our second grant that we operate straight out of Tallahassee is called the Incumbent Worker Training Grant. This program uh, created in 1999. Um, this current year uh, was awarded $4 million and, uh, and we sped right through that money. Um, the, the economy was really in full churn to begin with. Um, a lot of companies were upskilling and training, but now with COVID-19, uh, the training opportunities are even greater, uh, more online training as well. 
and uh, our state statute suggests at least two million uh, go into this. It's uh, and our executive committee approved a, an additional two million this year, but our full budget will be determined on June 4th of this year to start the July 1 fiscal year. Uh, maximum wards on this, you can see you can see the results here. Um, nearly 68 million awarded in grants, 2,700 served, 166,000. The um, the maximum award on these grants is 200,000. Uh, depending on the company's size, um, it could be a 50% reimbursement of training costs, or for companies that are 50 or fewer, it could be up to a 75% uh, reimbursement of training costs. Again, it's flexible to meet the company's needs. We do not get in the space of telling you what uh, training you need. Um, that's your choice. You can hire within, you can use your own existing uh, staff, or you can bring in other folks. Um, and let's see, okay, I think I'm getting close to my time, but here's some uh, from the Apago study. Here's some examples of uh, highlights from this training grant as well. 91% of companies surveyed reported the grant had a positive impact on their business. 82% still employed in Florida. Increase in growth, employment growth, 26. 25% of companies reported that they gained new business contract sales or increased the grant. And uh, although it's not required, higher skilled people often earn a little bit more money. So average increase in wage was 18% growth. Now uh, to wrap it up, I appreciate the information up front on the hiring, the, retrain, the retention, and uh, the training needs. Um, that can help really determine what your strategy is looking forward as far as retention. If you see here, um, one last thing, return on investment, post-training, 17% of the uh, folks had wage increases in incumbent worker training. 46% in quick response training. Uh, this is my direct information. If you want to, you can reach out to me directly. I've included my cell phone as, as we're working uh, from home uh, just a few more weeks. But I'd be glad, happy to take any questions at the end of this PowerPoint and then, of course, any calls um, moving forward. But uh, Tina, thank you for the opportunity uh, to present just a few things what's, or, that are going on in the Career Source family and the Career Source. Florida Network, and I hope to be an asset uh, to each of you going forward. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Daryl, for all that great information. I'm sure there are lots of questions, and as I mentioned before, please put those, those over in the question chat box on the right-hand side, and as we have time left over, we will answer those. Again, I want to stress that the relationship between Florida Makes and both of our partners who are presenting today is that our business advisors are very well trained in helping our manufacturers secure these grants, minimize the administrative paperwork. Um, and, and the other thing I want to, as I worked for CareerSource for four years, um, is that I always heard about, oh, you know, it's so onerous. We had to hire 27 attorneys just to complete the application. Don't be stuck by experience that you had 10 years ago. Um, they've worked really, really hard to streamline a lot of these processes to help our manufacturers. And so please reach out to our business advisors and we can help um, run interference on some questions and things that you might have as well. So. We are all here collectively as a sector partners to help each other. So with that said, it is now my added pleasure to introduce Fernando Mendez, Career Source uh, Services Program Deputy Director with Veterans Florida. And let's see, um, James, I'm not sure if you can move us forward here. Uh, Fernando helps Florida businesses find, hire, and train veterans. He served five years in the U.S. Navy aboard the USS George Washington. We thank you for your service, Fernando, and as, lo as a logistics specialist. After the military, he graduated from FSU with a degree in political science and international affairs, and he currently resides with our Veterans Florida program in the state of Florida. And thank you also for joining us today, Fernando. 
Thank you so much for having me uh, and being able to present. Uh, well, uh, thank you everybody for listening in and, and being here. And I would like to share with you uh, better in Florida what we do and how we can help the manufacturing community of Florida. So Veterans Florida is a nonprofit organization created back in 2014 uh, to help veterans fully transition into a civilian life. So our, our goal is to promote Florida as the most veteran friendly state in the country and the best place to reside uh, in outside of the military. Uh, our mission is to attract, strengthen, and enhance. Uh, we are attracting veterans uh, and the skills and, uh, and their families to come to Florida and, and fill the positions that you guys have open and uh, to strengthen Florida business with uh, those skill sets and uh, that value that, that veterans bring to the table and to enhance entrepreneurial skills of veterans and helping them establish businesses here uh, themselves if they are, uh, if they are are interested in that. So briefly talking about who are veterans. Uh, it's just someone who has served in the United States military and was released or discharged under conditions other than dishonorable. Uh, what that means is that there are other discharges that are not honorable, uh, like general, and, and, and as such, that a person would still be considered a veteran. In 2017, uh, there were 20.4 million men and women, so it's about 8% of the population over 18. So a lot of the workforce that you're going to find, uh, it's going to be bad news. So in Florida, uh, if two candidates are going for the position that you have, all things being equal, if you give preference to the veteran, that is not a, a, a violation of the law. In fact, there's a law that, that says that you can give, private employers can give preference to veterans for the purpose of hiring them. So, Recruiting veterans, uh, the, there are many organizations that are, are more than happy to help uh, recruiting veterans. Uh, in the state of Florida, you can contact Veterans Florida Career Source uh, on nonprofits uh, or Hire Heroes or Hire Heroes USA or Casey, and you can even reach out to private firms like Bradley Morris, which is also known as Recruit Military. Landstat or Landroom HR. So one thing to keep in mind uh, is that the military is a very complex organization. And a given individual is expected to do a lot more than what their title uh, entails. Uh, so when you see a resume that, that has been done with just military skill translators, uh, which is a good starting point. Uh, it, it might be missing some of the finer details of what the ability of that given veteran is or what the experience of that given veteran is. Uh, one example, let's say that somebody was working in a an airframe uh, mechanic uh, and that person spent 20 years doing that. Obviously, by the end of the 20 years, he still has the same title but at that level, uh, at that time, he probably would have been doing more higher level stuff, not actually preparing the aircraft. So if you have any questions, uh, if you get a resume from a veteran and, and you might not understand some of the things that they, they have written in that, uh, you can go uh, to reach out to us again and we would be more than happy to help you uh, understand that veteran's resume. 
uh, you can go to uh, career source. Uh, there's uh, the legal position. That person is very knowledgeable also. Uh, the Sherm Foundation has a Veterans at Work Certificate Program, which I encourage all of you to, to participate in. And you also have uh, the website uh, PSYCHARMOR.org that is has a wealth of resources uh, of information that, that you can uh, use. Okay, so what do we do for the veterans and their spouses? Uh, we help them with transition services. So we tell them about how is living in Florida and all the opportunities that we have with employment and that there is. We also help them with career services, such as skill assessment, uh, the resume assistant, interview preparation. And lastly, we help them with job placements. So we either place them directly with one of the companies that we're working for, or try to coach them through the application process and, 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 and do those uh, career services as they're applying for jobs. So what, how can Veterans Florida help the employers in the state? Uh, we can do, we have workforce recruiting uh, that if you have a position uh, that is W2 full time, uh, we can help you fill that uh, with a veteran. Uh, we can also help you, uh, like I mentioned before, with your resume uh, of, of a veteran that may have applied that might have, might have language that, that you uh, don't understand or there's acronyms that, that are unfamiliar and, and not easily visible online. The other thing that we can help you with is with a workforce grant. Uh, we can do 50% reimbursement for employers uh, for skill-based trainings for veterans, uh, whether they're new uh, employee or already an existing employee. Uh, per veteran maximum is $8,000, and that's per year. So each fiscal year, uh, that amount gets reset. And the total per company is $200,000. Now that $200,000 max is uh, potentially uh, can be increased uh, with a formal request uh, to my board of directors. So the requirements to participate uh, with us, uh, the positions need to be full-time, only to permanent employment. Uh, the job needs to be based out of Florida, and it has to require some level of specialized skills. Uh, the workforce grant uh, is available for any veteran uh, of any discharge status uh, employed uh, by your company in those qualified jobs. Uh, the skill-based trainings needs to provide education that uh, veteran can apply that knowledge uh, to develop a career or develop uh, com competence uh, on that industry. And this training can be either on the job, in-house corporate training, or even third-party training. All of those are eligible. How to apply? I, I cannot express enough how much Florida makes uh, helps businesses that we work with. They know the ins and out of applying. So I highly encourage you to reach out to Florida makes business advisors. Uh, after doing that, uh, you can go ahead and go to our website and complete the initial form. Then uh, one of the veteran Florida staff will contact you to Cost the program in greater detail and determine if the jobs and the employer is qualified. Uh, then uh, there are a couple of uh, forms that need to be filled out, uh, such as legal business information and company contact, uh, to be able to generate the agreement. Uh, after this agreement is signed, 
uh, you again work with a uh, staff from Barnes, Florida uh, to get the job details uh, for either recruiting or training and, and, and reimbursement. Uh, here's my personal contact information. Uh, feel free to reach out uh, at any time through email or through a phone. And those are the uh, links for the, all the social uh, medias where we are. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tina, for having me. And thank you, everybody, for, for being here. All right, thank you so much, Fernando. Thank both of you, Fernando and Daryl, for sharing all this really important information. Um, it was a lot to go through, and we just really want to make everyone aware of these services that are available. And Fernando, I have one question for you. During the coronavirus situation that we're in, have you waived the full-time employment requirement to get veterans to work right now? On the recruiting side, yes. Uh, however, on the training grant side, uh, we have not. Okay, thank you. And we'll go to the next slide here. What I want um, everyone to be aware again, um, we're very proud of the great experience of our business advisors. All of them have spent most of their lives in. Um, manufacturing and it makes them great um, resources for all of you. They are spread out throughout the state and um, this information that you see here also resides on our website. So please let them be your first stop to help get through all of this. But um, we do want you to be aware of the um, resource of both CareSource Florida and Veterans Florida. And again, thank you both for being here. I'm going to go over here and take a few questions that we have. Um, this one looks like it's for Daryl. With the QTI funding sunsetting on June 30th, it, a lot of acronyms here, QRT <laughs> response training and incumbent worker training grants are going to be used as one of the major incentives for the Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance. Yeah, it sounds like my good buddy Jack Benning's down. <laughs> and then uh, career source Broward and yeah that QTI uh, is sunset set to sunset six on uh, June 30th uh, Enterprise Florida uses that a lot and and economic development projects but that's a great point um, our quick response training grants our incumbent worker training grants they are great tools on economic development projects in fact I just had the pleasure of, of joining us you know on a South Florida call which brought together um, two of the South Florida Business Makes Advisors, Jay Hess and Micah um, Daughtery, 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 sorry, Daughtery, sorry, um, um, Matt Rocco down at the South Florida Manufacturing Association, Enterprise Florida, the Beacon Council, Career Source South Florida, a lot of partners wrapped around uh, a manufacturer down there that's going to be developing PPE equipment. So um, great resources and great partnerships um, across Florida makes and our Crystal Florida network and our other partners. All right, thank you. I hope that answers that question. And Fernando, for you, would an employee in the reserve qualify for Veterans Florida assistance? Yes, I, I forgot to mention, and uh, thank you so much for the question. So it's not only veterans. Anybody who is serving or has served in the United States military at any point. So if they're currently in the National Guard or if they're in the reserves uh, or if they're a veteran from the Vietnam era, all of them qualify. Okay, thank you so much. And Daryl, a question, what is the difference between training grants offered by Career Source Florida and the grants are they different, the ones that are available at the regional career source centers? That's a great question, Tina. Thank you so much. Um, I, I just want to re I want to iterate that we work in tandem with our local partners, but we do have uh, two different grants at the state level. One is funded by the legislature directly, the quick response training grant, 
um, for those net new jobs. And then our incumbent worker, which is part of our uh, USDOL federal funding. The local teams um, across Florida receive probably about 90% of the US Department of Labor funding at the local level. Um, so they have a whole host of local training services available as well. So many times when we come together, um, we look at a, the whole um, array of local services and state level services. And so sometimes those local grants will plug in um, and be exactly what is perfect for that employer. Sometimes it's a combination, um, a lot of times, or sometimes it may just be a state level grant. The network uh, comes together and kind of lays out those those different opportunities for the business. So um, I'm just going to clarify. So would you say the regional centers focus more on individual career seekers and helping individual regional employers, whereas Career Source Florida addresses um, funding grants on a much larger level, meaning no. the training everyone within a company versus training an employee? You know, I wouldn't, and, and our, there is a reason for that. Um, we're, we're part of the same network. Um, okay. it, is true that, it is true that our local workforce boards serve uh, individuals directly, you know, job seekers, and they, they focus in on that recruitment, the hiring, uh, but they also focus in on uh, a lot of training, a lot of upskilling locally as well. So I hesitate to say, we're we're for this and they're for that it's really right. a combination and it's really kind of working together to to develop really a seamless solution to the to the business so they don't it, it doesn't matter to the business you know what funding stream or is that state is that local whatever um we really work together to try to come up with that seamless solution okay and again another plug our biz advisors will be happy to help you um sort through that I guess you probably, there's a question that says, can you summarize the difference between QRT and IWT grant and why would a company choose one over the other? Sure, real quick, and I um, failed to kind of draw this distinction up probably before, but quick response, um, high skill, high wage jobs, net new to a company. So, um, you know, really high uh, wage. So the state average wage is about 125% of the state annual wage is about $29 and, and change. Um, so net new jobs that pay above that, um, that are net new to Florida, um, those manufacturers, that would be a perfect fit in that scenario. The incumbent worker training program is really focusing on upskilling your existing uh, team members. So for those who have been there at least six months, um, and there's no wage requirement on that. So as long as you're a for-profit company um, and you, your employees have been at least on the job for at least six months, that incumbent worker training grant is perfect for that. And that, that's why it's so popular. Um, and we get we get so much in, uh, uptake of that. I hope, hopefully that helps. All right, thank you. And. Um... Is there anything else? There's a question here that we can do to support veterans in this um, in the state of Florida as far as getting them trained and um, employed, Fernando. You cut off a little. Please repeat the question. What can we do more to help veterans in Florida and help you get them employed in place? One of the things that, that veterans have a hard time, uh, and I kind of mentioned this in the presentation, is translating those skills. Uh, for some of them, it may be the first time in their life uh, that they actually been to uh, and applied for a job and been to an interview. Uh, so giving them a little bit more time when you're looking at the resume, uh, reaching out and, and asking them uh, questions, uh, if, if that's something that you guys do, reaching out to an organization that can help you understand the resume uh, and giving them a little bit more latitude uh, would really go a long way. And veterans come with a lot of skill sets, uh, soft skills and hard skills that might not be reflected uh, and they would be a great addition to your company. Yes, and it's very important that you actually help recruit them for companies, et cetera. And you, just give you a plug, you have a virtual trade show coming up or a virtual, um, 
Veterans Florida event? That is correct. Uh, we hold a yearly expo in which uh, we have a uh, part career fair and part entrepreneurship pitch up competition, kind of like a shark tank uh, in TV. Yeah. And we give out prizes. Uh, so, yes, that is coming up uh, June 18. Uh, if anybody's interested, I, I can uh, drop the link uh, when the information is. Even out. Okay, we will try and include that. Um, that seems like the only questions that we have here. Um, I think, Daryl, there is one when will incumbent worker training be funds be available again? And um, I'll let you answer that. But um... sure. So um, our normal allocation uh, kicks in July 1 of each year. Um, this year, because of COVID, our executive committee did approve an, an additional $2 million to be implemented. Um, so that is in the works. The uh, guidelines can be found on our website. Those are being changed uh, as well. Um, so I would just say sometime between now and July 1, um, our portal will open back up and folks will be able to apply for the new funding. But uh, no later than July 1, it will be up. It possibly could be up. Um, you know, in June sometime, maybe even early, mid-June. Um, so I would say just kind of watch the website or uh, feel free to reach out to me email. Okay, and it's important to note that your funds are distributed by request. You don't parse it out throughout the year. Um, so um, it's important for people to understand that that July 1 every single year is important if they have training coming up to get their requests in early on those versus later if they can plan that way. Um, all right, thank you so much, everyone. I don't see any other questions here. Um, our time is running short right now. We will be providing a copy of the presentation today as well as the um, this has been recorded. We will provide um, the slide deck and um fernando i believe if you give us the, the the link to your virtual event we could send that out with that post information and remember oh it's right there veteransexpo.org all righty and um please feel free make sure you use the resources available the funny thing about grant money is that if they don't if we don't spend it it goes away, you know. Um, so just make sure you take this opportunity, particularly if you have staff who might be laid off or you had to change your internal practices, you've switched over to really helping do PPE, things like that, that these organizations here stand ready to help you assist with training. And please make sure you contact your business advisor to help you through the process. So thank you all again. Thank all of you for attending this and for your time. And don't hesitate to reach out to any of us who can help you in your workforce challenges. Have a great and safe Memorial Day, and hopefully we will all be able to meet again together soon. Thank you. And here are some upcoming webinars. COVID best practices, returning to uh, work, working remotely. And then the next one in June is business success through environmental sustainability. That information will be posted on our Florida Makes website. Thank you, everyone. And again, have a very, very wonderful three-day weekend. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Fernando. Thanks, Thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.